in the April 2025 update to Photoshop Camera Raw, you've got to see this. If you go to your masking panel, you're now going to see a landscape masking option here. And what this is going to do is generate segments of the scene that it can detect in the landscape through AI. So we get options for sky, mountains, architecture, water, natural ground. There's a couple more that we'll talk about later on in the video, but essentially what you can do is create masks of each part of this scene. Once you hit create, it's going to go to your normal masking panel here. I'll switch over to the color overlay, and now you can automatically edit parts of the photo. The really cool part about this is that as you edit parts of the photo, so if I go to natural ground, for example, here, and I want to you know, make some of the area a little bit brighter, you still have the normal masking panel and you still have all of the other masking tools that you had, and now you have more because I would normally say this isn't really what I want for the natural ground part. I really want the foreground part of this photo. So check this out. Now I can go to subtract. I can go back down to select landscape. I can actually use the AI segments to subtract from each other because I know that the mountains were a, a segment in and of their own. So now I can subtract that from natural ground. So now that I'm left with really just everything in the foreground, which is what I wanted in this mask. And then you can also go to subtract, use any of the other tools in here, like a brush to get rid of any of the other spots in the photo that you didn't want to select. I've got to tell you, I did not expect to like this as much as I do. Uh, it has become a huge part of my workflow. I use it on almost every photo now. And because of that, uh, we're going to look at some more examples. But there's a, there's a link in the description for a preset. It can get cumbersome to generate all those masters up to seven. So there's a free preset that's basically one click. It'll generate them for you. So I find I use it often now because I use these masks often. So that's free. You can find out how to get it below. There's also a little mini course and preset pack down there uh, that I created to help get you past this learning curve of these tools. And then lastly, there, there, are, there are more features inside of Photoshop. It's not just the landscape segments. There's more features inside of Camera Raw. There's more features inside of the main Photoshop interface. So let's take a look. We are in Camera Raw, and when it comes to the masking tools, it's, it's, it's really where I do the bulk of my editing. So I get there pretty quick. I might do lens corrections, and if I have to do noise reduction, which I, I really wouldn't on a landscape photo, I'll get there, I'll, I'll do that first. But I'm gonna head over to the masking once I decide I wanna start editing the photo. And you can see we've got our landscape section there. We click on that, it's automatically going to generate the segments that it sees inside of the photo. So you're not going to get all of them for every photo. So in this one, it found vegetation, water, and natural ground. The ones that we're missing here, because there's seven in total. So we have mountains, we have architecture, uh, there's natural ground in this one. There's also artificial ground. Okay. So that would be roads and pathways. Uh, there's vegetation. There's, we talked about architecture, and then there's also sky. Okay, and sky is actually not any different from the select sky that we're used to uh, inside of the photo. So at this point, let's go ahead and we'll hit create. So it's gonna create these masks for us. So we've got the vegetation mask, which is gonna be pretty much all the greenery and the leaves. We've got water, and then we've got natural ground, which is gonna be the foreground here. So the way that we go about this is exactly as you'd think. We just start editing, but now we have access, essentially think about it, to the layers in the scene. And that's really, we're, we're always trying to convey depth in our photo. We do a lot in camera to try to convey depth and we wanna keep that depth. So in here we can start working on the vegetation and then I can use this, I can use all these masks to my advantage. This is where the power comes in and this is honestly why, I'm, you're gonna hear me talk about a little mini course that I created in a second here, but this is why I created it because I don't think, I don't think everybody's mind goes directly to this. But there's so many tips, so I can go to vegetation I, let's say I really just wanna work on everything in the back of the image. Well, I can go over here and I can go to subtract. And now I can subtract all of the normal things that I, I normally could that I've always had access to in my masking panel. So I can subtract select subject, sky, background. I can use the object selection tool, but I can also go back to the scene segments. So I can go back to select landscape and then I can choose a part of the photo to subtract. So I'll choose natural ground in this one. And this will give me a mask that's closer to just the background, just the upper area of this photo here. Now, if I wanted that part of the image, I still have it down here. I still remember I still created a mask from it, but 
I personally probably would never edit the back of the photo, the top of this photo, the same way I would edit the, the bottom part of this photo. So that's why this is useful for me. Well, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty excited by this stuff. I can't go throwing around biggest update ever, so we'll go pretty close to that. The, the masking panel that, got, that came out four years ago, I think that was the biggest update ever, but, but this is really, really close and it's for everybody. Anybody that shoots outdoors can take advantage of this stuff. You're gonna see as there, we go along, there's up to seven different segments. Before we dive into some other examples, take a look below, there's a link down there. Um, you're gonna see as we generate these segments in the mask, it can be a little bit cumbersome, always having to click the check boxes. There's a little freebie that is just gonna save you a little bit of time and sanity with that. Number two, I developed a little preset and mini course, it's called Scene Split AI Presets and Mini Course. Um, and I did this to give you a head start, give you a boost. It is. It is extremely affordable for what you get. It is, is very, very affordable, very easy and quick to get through, but it will take what I think is gonna be a major shift and change to your editing. And I think it will take that and make that whole process a lot faster. So feel free to check that out as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So let's go to vegetation. And in this case, I think I'll make that just a little bit brighter. I'm gonna pull back on blacks overall here, maybe add some warmth to it, and then even a little bit of saturation down up there, okay? Actually, even some shadows. It got a little bit dark on the left-hand side there. Okay, so that's that mask. Now I've got my water mask here. Again, make it brighter, make it darker. I probably even wouldn't do that with exposure. I'd probably do it with whites. i get a little bit better. Uh, better view of it. And then with water, you can go a couple of different ways with it. Sometimes depending on the, the texture of the water, it can help to add more texture to it. Sometimes if you wanna make it appear a little bit more smoother, you can go to the negative side with texture. So we can go that way. And then I'll go down here to natural ground. Same thing, probably open up those shadows a little bit. Move the whites up, move the blacks down just a hair, make it a little bit warmer and also add some saturation down there as well. Don't forget, you can go back, I'll go back to vegetation as an example. There's so many other tools inside here. We're not going through as a full masking course here, but I can go to point color. I could take that eyedropper and I could just click on the greens inside of there. And now I can start to shift the hue of those greens if I wanted to. I could shift the saturation if I wanted to. Okay, I could go up here, go back over to point color. I could now maybe target some of the oranges and the reds in the photo. This is a fall color, so those are always good to target here. And probably even see if I can shift, you can see them in the background there, the top right corner. So I'd shift those a little more toward the red orange side, add a little bit more saturation to them. Okay, because those colors for me in landscape photos and fall photos, those are the colors that really stand out. All right, so you can always see a little before and after up there. You can turn off all of your masks uh, to see that before and after. I probably went a little bit heavy on some of the color there, but uh, I know it's also hard to see on screen, so you do have to overdo it a little bit just because on a video sometimes uh, it's easy to miss. So when you're done, you just continue on your editing process. There's, it, it, it's the same masking panel that we've always had. We just now essentially have more shapes, more options to create those masks with. Now, at this point, I'm gonna cancel out of here because I wanna give you uh, another example, I'll also take a look at the rest of the new features. But one of the things that I, I think is really encouraging about this is we're gonna just take this photo, open it up into the camera raw filter because you don't, you don't have to be in the main Photoshop interface um, to do selections and masking. This is really the place where you should be doing this. There's a, it's so much more powerful than most of the selection tools we have elsewhere in Photoshop. But it's called landscape. Check this out. Any photo outdoors really falls into this category. So I can go over here to landscapes and it's gonna grab the sky, the vegetation, the natural ground. So now if you're editing an outdoor portrait, a wedding, sports photos, wildlife, uh, travel, architecture, uh, just about anything you can think of that's outside, it's going to create masks for those areas. So it's not just specific to landscape photos. And that's, that's really one of the main reasons I'm so excited about it is because it works for so many different types of photos. 
So now we've selected all those different areas. We can create those masks. And now I have access to go to, let's say the vegetation and I can go maybe make that area a little bit brighter. Again, we also have all these other masking tools. It didn't make a perfect mask around the trees. So I just go to subtract. I go to select sky and that's going to make that mask better because I'm able to add and subtract from these landscape segments using all the other masks that we're used to using here inside of Photoshop. Okay, so let's cancel out of there and let's move back into the main Photoshop interface because they have done some selection improvements inside here as well. If you go over to your object selection tool, one of the things we have over here is select people. And so you can select a specific person, but it's more than that. It actually goes deeper than that. And this, we, we have something very similar to this in Camera Raw. This is where where this one takes takes it takes it in just a little bit of an extra way here we can do hair eyebrows eyes iris nose mouth which we could do a lot of these segments inside of camera raw too but there's other things inside of here just getting down to the specific ears and the hands and the upper clothes and the lower clothes and the coat so there are a lot of segments inside of here that we can select that we aren't able to inside of camera raw. So my workflow is always gonna be get as many selections as I can done on the raw photo in the raw editor. That is by far the superior place to do your selections and to do your editing. But when I can't do it, then we have to come over here into Photoshop. So you can go ahead and click on something. You can choose apply and then you'll see it creates a little marching ants uh, selection for you there. And you got, you still have your, uh, your object uh, selection tool here. So as you click around, you can start to see all the different segments that it'll create. And lastly here, so let's go into, I shouldn't even say lastly because there's still a couple more things. We're gonna head back over into Camera Raw because there's still another feature in there that we didn't see. This one is going to come in the uh, form of a technology preview. So this is my uh, youngest son here getting ready to graduate. I went up to take some pictures of him. If you go to that little gear icon in the top right corner, little thing called technology previews, turn that little checkbox on. I think of this as beta. Adobe seems to be testing some of these in Camera Raw, and then they seem to be rolling them out over time um, into Lightroom. So it almost seems like this is the playground for some of these features to test in a little bit more of an advanced beta where it's not necessarily another application you have to download. You get them right inside here. You just have to turn them on, okay? So uh, this is in Camera Raw 17.3 and above. So what we can do is we go over to the little eraser tool and one new thing, this isn't new to Camera Raw, this has been a technology preview for a while, is we can do reflections, but at the same time now we can do reflections on a non-raw photo. But the other one here is people. So I can go in here and it can generate uh, a thing to exclude people from the photo. And this isn't really meant to remove your subject, it's more meant to remove people from a background. So you can see it's it's put a little eraser on some of the options here. This one's a little bit weird to me because it's got his leg in it, but we're gonna click remove. We're gonna see how it does, um, but still pretty pretty great technology when you think about the, the fact that we're able to do this on the raw photo. We don't even have to go into the main Photoshop interface to get it done here. And it actually did a really good job, especially around his leg down there. So uh, that's pretty cool too. So again, that's a technology preview. You're not gonna find it inside of Lightroom yet, but um, you can play around with that inside of Camera Raw if you wanna give it a try. Cancel out of there. And then the last thing is going to be here. Uh, let's move over to this photo. The last thing is your contextual taskbar has this little adjust colors option. Now it samples some colors from your scene. You can go ahead and click on that and then you can adjust the hue saturation. In fact, let's get off of the object selection tool so it doesn't uh, it doesn't keep selecting areas for us, but now we can start to go and sample colors from our scene. It's a lot like hue and saturation. It is a little bit better. Again, I would try, I would always try to get this work done inside your raw editor. Whether it's Lightroom or Camera Raw, I'm always gonna try to get this color work done inside of there. But for those of you that do need um, and have the need to edit your color inside of Photoshop, uh, this is definitely a step forward because it makes it a lot easier to get to some of these colors. Well, I hope that gives you a good introduction to some of the new features. It's uh, it's it's just a, a middle of the year release, but it's it's pretty impactful. When, when a change comes that becomes something I use on every photo, I would consider that a, a pretty impactful change. Don't forget, check the link in the description for 
for the link to the free preset if you want to find out more about my mini course. Lastly, I did a video on what's new inside of Lightroom. It's pretty much the, the masking tools that are close to, to what you have here inside of Camera Raw. But if you are interested in how that relates over into Lightroom, that'd be a great video to go to next.